six. This is the first lesson in a series of lessons that will be all about design technology, DT. So our objective today is to recognise that structures are made for a purpose and have an intentional function. That means that uh, buildings, bridges, all of those kinds of things are, are created with a reason in mind. They have a purpose, they have a job to do. So keep that in your mind as we go through this lesson today. So by the end of the next couple of days, you will be creating your own model of El Castillo. I've popped a little example on there for you. Obviously, with you being at home, um, we don't have the tools and things that we can use. So we're going to try and be as inventive as possible to create our mind creation. But just ask your parents, perhaps, if they've got any uh, boxes and things lying around, if you've had any Amazon deliveries, any boxes or spare things that you think might be useful for your creation. You don't have to paint it, so if you don't have paints, please don't worry. It's just getting you thinking about how you can build things at home. So please don't panic if you feel like you don't have the equipment. Um, it is not the end of the world. It can just be as, as good as you can possibly do at home under these circumstances. In this lesson today, you won't be building anything. We're doing our background research to get us started about why El Castillo exists. Before we begin our lesson, we want to do a little pre-assessment to see what you already know. So what we want you to focus on is the word structure. And I want you to think, what does the word structure mean in the context of DT, design technology? So just write down any ideas that you have about what the word structure means. If you don't know, that's absolutely fine. Just note that down so we are aware. But we will be going over what structure means is just to get you thinking what are structures? Why do we need them? What do you think they are in DT? And the second part of your pre-assessment for this is you to note down now the different steps for designing a product. Do you know the design process? If you know if there are any steps to designing or different stages, please note this down now. Um, we will be going over this throughout the week, so please don't panic once again if you're not sure what this is. It's just for us to get to understand and know what you need to know further in order to build on your knowledge of design technology. Okay, so here we have some pictures of different buildings. Um, and I want you to just think down, what do you think they all have in common? So just note down, it might have something linked to some of the words we've been looking at at the start of this lesson. Uh, jot them down onto the sheet. If you don't have a printer, please don't worry. Just write them down onto a piece of paper. Any ideas that you might have about what they all have in common? Any similarities? So the answer to the previous question about what does each one have in common is each one is a structure. So quite famous structures as well, and I expect most of you will know the names of them. So when we're looking at a structure, the definition of it is a building or other object constructed from different parts. This can include towers, homes, bridges, stadiums, barns. The list is quite endless. The one that often surprises people the most is the bridges are a structure, but they are made from different parts. So now your next job is on the sheet you have, if you can't print it off, don't worry, just note it down on paper, is I want you to write down what you think was the purpose of each structure. Why was it originally built? What was its job when it was first constructed? So thinking really carefully, you're going to note that down about what you think that the job of each of those buildings was when they were made. Thinking really carefully because you have in year four studied the Colosseum, so you probably will know that one. And thinking about the other buildings. If you're not sure of the names of them at the minute, that's absolutely fine. We are going to go through them sh very shortly. So, hopefully, by now you have jotted down your ideas about each structure, and I'm going to go through them with you now. So, this first one here is the Empire State Building, and it is in New York in the United States of America. It was actually built in 1913, construction finished in 1931. It's what we call a skyscraper. So, it is a building and it is a structure. It's extremely tall, um, so it was called a skyscraper. New York is actually full of a lot of different skyscrapers, and for a long time, this was like the world's biggest building. However, now other buildings have surpassed it around the world. It's not even the tallest building in New York anymore. 
So um, its original purpose, and I would like you to add this to its sheet, your sheet if you didn't get this right, is that it was built as an office building. So it's a space for people to work in. And it still functions as that now. And it was also built with observation decks. So places you could go right to the top and look out over the city of New York. So it was a bit of a tourist attraction as well. And it still is to this day. You can go and travel there, travel up it, and you can get a really good view of New York. So it had two functions, two purposes, this building. Okay, so this building is Buckingham Palace, and I'm sure some of you will have heard of that one before. And that is located in London, England. It was actually built in 1703, and it was home and is home to the reigning monarch of the UK. So our Queen, this is one of her homes. She doesn't live here all of the time, but she does live here if she's staying in London. Um, it is full of her, people who work for her as well. So a lot of jobs get done here relating to the monarchy of England and um, Scotland and Wales. So anything that needs doing relating to the Queen or the royal family takes place and happens in Buckingham Palace. It has been home to many key moments in history. Um, it's now, you can go and visit as a tourist attraction, but only at certain times of the year. But people do travel from all over the world to come and look at the building. And it is an important landmark for the UK. I'm sure many of you have seen images of this building before, this structure. This is a tower and a clock tower called Big Ben. It is located in London, England, and it actually started being built in 1843, but it took a really long time to build and it was finished in 1859. If any of you have seen photos of it recently, it's actually going through some reconstruction at the moment, and having work done to it to maintain it and make sure that we keep structure alive. It is part of the Houses of Parliament, which is where our laws are made. So it's part of the government buildings. And as I've stated there, it is a clock tower, so you can see really clearly that the clock is on there. Again, it was originally built as part of the Houses of Parliament, but it is a really important landmark for the United Kingdom now, and people recognise it from all over the world. But that was not its original purpose. And our last building was the Colosseum. I'm sure many of you have seen this before um, when you did the Romans. So this is located in Rome in Italy and it was built, it's the oldest of our buildings, our structures that we're looking at, in 70 to 80 AD. It is, or was, used as an amphitheatre, which was used for hosting gladiator fights, sporting events, and even animal hunting. It was a way for emperors and people in charge to really show off how much wealth they had and how much power they had. Um, and obviously now it does not function as that anymore, but its original purpose was those things. So as we are going to be building El Castillo, it's important now to know and think about the purpose of it. Now we've talked a lot this half term all about Chichen Itza, the city in which El Castillo resides. But now we need to think carefully and list our ideas about what we think El Castillo is for. So please jot down any initial ideas or anything you can remember about why you think the Mayans built El Castillo. It was not just there to look like a pyramid, it was there for a reason. So note down any ideas that you have about that. So if you weren't sure or you want to now check and double check because it had a lot of functions did this building, I would like you to complete the research she attached to this person and murder and add your information to the worksheet that you have or if you're doing it on paper add it on there. I want you to find out about El Castillo's purpose. Now it had more than one so just to jot that down and get that onto your sheet so that you have it in your mind El Castillo was a structure built with a purpose in mind. And what did the Mayans use it for? There is more than one thing. So please look at the research, note down your ideas in your own words and upload it at the end of this lesson. The final part of our lesson today is to answer this key question all about structures. So are structures important to a civilization? So we've looked at buildings that were from England as part of the civilization. So you had the Houses of Parliament, Buckingham Palace. I would say they were very important because they were home to the Queen and the government. And um, we have looked at the Colosseum again. That was where an emperor would show off their wealth and their strength. So was that important to the civilization? You've also now looked at El Castillo. So thinking really carefully about the Mayan civilization, do you think? El Castillo was an important part of the Mayan civilization. Just note down your ideas using because to explain 
if you think that structures are important to a civilization and whether we still need structures today. At this point, we have now finished our first lesson all about structures in our design technology process. So the next session will be starting the design process and you will begin to design what your model will look like. So please upload all of the work from this lesson to Edmodo and then go to lesson two, which will be for today as well, um, and go through that and to begin to do a proper design drawing. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed learning all about structures in this first DT lesson.